Hi, I'm Patty. I'm Kim Michelle. And I'm Jill. Welcome to our podcast. It's a great day to talk. Because honestly, what day isn't a great day to talk? So join us in our conversation. A great day to talk is brought to you by St. George Design. Offering complete website design, social media management, search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ad management, and many other digital and print marketing services. StGeorgeDesign.com And by Richardson Brothers Custom Homes, third generation builders who have been building custom homes in southern Utah for over 25 years. They will take your dream home from concept to completion. Contact RichardsonBrothers.com Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kim Michelle. Hi, Patty. Hi, Kim Michelle. Hi, Jill. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Do you want to tell your little story really fast? Yeah. So last time we were just a little bit starting late starting because I was not feeling well. I was not feeling well and I was in the restroom. So I don't want to give you all the details. Um, <laughs> no one some wa- of you no might like you that. So you can contact me later and I'll give you all, all, the, all details. the details. All the gory details. Um, <laughs> So, and this time we're a little bit late, even though my husband was very clear about, you know, if you say you're going to start at six, you You should start at six. Mm -hmm. So we were um, kind of committed to that. Um, (laughs) And then we got in here and I'm like, ow, ow, ow. I think something just bit me right here. And there was a little, I thought maybe a little gnat was still in my arm right here where I got bit. And then Patty's like, you, you, you've got a bee on you. And no kidding, she like, but I courageously. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I courageously took the bee with my bare hands, yeah, cupped it, yeah, and threw it on the threw ground. Threw it on the ground. Don't say what happened. At and the we end. won't either. We won't after that because we know bees are essential to our environment <laughs> yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. But <laughs> but I also likened myself to that gal who pushed off the bear off her back oh, wall. There's no doubt you that saved I was my life right there. Easily I, as courageous, Patty. After sure. seeing that video, because then uh, Sean showed me because you know i'm you behind the times yet. always um i would have to agree yeah you were like the mama I, bear protecting yeah and i feel like i didn't even flinch like she didn't flinch and i didn't i just like oh this has to be done i gotta take this there's a job b and throw it away and yeah. she's like i gotta push this you yeah. know care mama bear off, off the wall to get yeah. away from yeah. my poochies I, I i i don't know how i didn't immediately start filming because yeah, because that I could have, have also Patty had so gonna, many million viewers no like kidding. she did. Yeah. It would have been it would have been yeah. all the rage and all the news. But no kidding. Regardless, uh, Kim Michelle, you do have a little hole in your arm. That's yeah, just I do. Your just elbow, a little bit. Your elbow mm-hmm. crack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, Patty, again, offered all kinds of like um, creams, creams from like her. hemorrhoid cream and, you know, that kind of stuff <laughs> to put on there to see if it would help. So, yes, I'm I all lathered up cream at this point. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm all lathered prepared. up. To, and so I'm sure I'll be fine. Yeah. Anaphylactic yeah. shock, if that were to happen. I know how to put the, if you have. Right, EpiPen. I know how to put the EpiPen She's in just her leg. waiting. We've been trained. We've been yeah. trained. And, and we do have this filming now, so that could be really awesome. That would be like I, a million views I really views hope for you sure. go in anaphylactic shock. <laughs> so you I can, hope I do. <laughs> Patty, here's my question. Okay, Kim Michelle I'm does questioning not have the now. EpiPen. Do you, in your Mary Poppins bag, I do not have, have an EpiPen. Epi well, then pen. don't hope I go into anaphylactic shock because you I don't have, have a an lamp. EpiPen. Oh, well, I have a lamp. Close enough. Close <laughs> enough, my friends. So oh, we're good. all good. Well, all is well. And, of course, it was an exciting story to tell. We had to share. Yeah. Yep. So. And actually, it may seem like it totally has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about. But, of course, we're going to we're gonna Connect weave it. it right in. Because that's how we roll. That, mm-hmm. it, absolutely. So if you ha- had a chance to see the post today, and if you didn't, that's just fine. But welcome to A Great Day to Talk, and uh, our topic today is going to be around community building and uh, how essential that is to creating a human experience where we can all, a shared human experience. That's the important part of that phrase, is that is to appreciate that while we're all different, unique, and we have different and unique experiences, that the best way to celebrate that is to also understand that although each of us are uniquely different, because we are in a shared human experience, there are also things that we also crave 
connection. Just because, uh -huh, just because we're human. Right. And, and so part we, of that is, is um, that connection. Right. And, and we, so, oh gosh, yeah, go I, ahead. You know, no, look at me. I'm no. like all over You go, this. girl. You're all ready. Over. Ready, ready, ready. No, we, we narrowed that down to how has the meaning of being a neighbor mm -hmm. or having neighbors, how has that changed? How has that, how does that look differently for us now, maybe versus when we were younger? Yeah. And do we still get the same kind of connection in our neighborhood communities as we did when we were younger? Yeah, so our topic today is Won't You Be My Neighbor has the definition or um, the actual experience of neighbors changed. Mm -hmm. And um, if it has, would we like to bring some back from our golden years? <laughs> Oh, wait, well, we're even, in our golden years. Even from years. our childhood. Our yeah. childhood years. Our childhood right. years and or even our young parent years yeah. when our kids were little. When we were young families. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's our conversation today. And if you would like to join in the conversation, just go to the Facebook page and you can put some notes in there. And we'll look to see them and <laughs> respond to them as soon as I find them. Yeah. On here. Right. <laughs> and um, here being if here not, we will respond right to here. them. Later. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when you were growing up, we'll start in the past and bring okay. it to the present. Okay. So, uh, and then project it into the future. Sure. So when you were growing up. So I lived in a small town just outside of St. George called Washington or Dogtown. <laughs> um, and it was before, you know, sidewalks. It was just, a, I mean, it, <laughs> we had color TV. <gasps> But what? we didn't have a remote, and we did have to get up and actually turn, turn the, the channel. Yeah. And sometimes we put tinfoil on the antennas and had to adjust to it best. to make yeah, sure we had right. the best picture. But, yeah, my neighbors were my people, my family. I would roam the neighborhood, and I'd play with the kids next door and up the street, and we would hike up the hill and just come by home by dark. And and we knew we knew our neighbors. We knew all our neighbors. I, and then when I got a little bit older, I babysat my neighbor's kids and um, – and that's just how we did. When I became a young parent, our first neighborhood was um, in St. George, our first house. And uh, Abby was a baby. Bailey was a, a four. And we knew all of our neighbors. We had, it was just little kids run amok in the you know right. neighborhood. And, and it was awesome. And on Sundays, someone would bring me cookies and yeah. Or, or whatever. If I needed something, I remember going home one night and there was a door open and I was nervous. So I called my neighbor across the street and said, could you just come walk through the house with me? Cause I'm home alone with the kids. I had a puppy get high centered and drown. And oh. I had my neighbor come and help me and he buried oh. the puppy oh. and took care of that for me. Um, I knew that I could call any of my neighbors um, during that time. And that was, you know, 20 years ago, 20 mm -hmm. plus years ago. Right. When that yeah. was that, when that was like that. And then even in my neighborhood, um, which we moved into, the kids were five and 10. Um, they made friends. It wasn't as connected. Our lots were bigger. We were more spread out and there weren't yeah. as many homes, but, um, you know, we still tried to maintain that neighborly environment yeah it was a lot of fun it was a great time it was one of my favorite times is in that first house when the kids were little and and we knew all of our neighbors right my it's, childhood was definitely that I lived in a cul-de-sac aka the circle which was you know how my parents put boundaries don't leave the circle, circle. Don't yeah leave the circle. exactly and everyone in our circle was you know they were all young families as well. And our next door neighbors, Jim and Brenda, they were like the second parents. And their kids were, their oldest was the same age as my brother, my younger, well, Todd, my just younger than me. And then they had one Susie's age. They had one Karen's age. And then, uh, you know, so I was kind of off on the other end. But we were always out in the yard. The in the summer, my favorite thing in the summer, one of the favorite things was after we'd all had our uh, bath time, we would get in our summer pajamas and my mom and Brenda would spread a great big blanket out on the front lawn. And we'd all sit out on the front lawn and 
you know, they'd just chat, 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 and we would then get on our bikes and ride around in a circle because we were in a circle. We weren't out on a street. I mean, it was just, you know, we did everything together. And I loved that growing up. Mm -hmm. I really loved that growing up. It was kind of a blessing and a curse. You know what I mean? Because I sure hated it when I was a teenager and maybe I was out doing something I should, which I would have never, ever Shouldn't done. Shouldn't have. I always she thought did she everything. should. I oh, always did everything. Should. I <laughs> okay. did everything the right way. I never gave Are my you parents. also my mom? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I was a perfect child. Just ask uh, my mom and my dad. They'll tell you. But uh, I did not like it. It was the curse when I was a teenager and I didn't want to run into my neighbor, say I was somewhere at midnight when I was supposedly somewhere else and run into the neighbor at the store or something like that. I, I, I'm just supposing that or something that right. happened. If that right. was if something that imagine if, ever done imagine if. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. But I definitely, it was hard as a teenager, but I sure loved it growing up. Yeah. Are you trying to get that closer to your mouth right I'm, now, Jill? I'm feeling like it's going to... Oh, there we go. That's the <laughs> microphone we're talking about. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Anyway, it was funny because my sister was here um, just this last 24 hours, and we were talking today about some things from my teenage life. And uh, a lot of those things included not wanting to get caught by neighbors. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah, because it really was like you had 20 moms. It was like you yeah, had 20 moms. Because... Um, and some of them were actually stricter than your own mom. Yes. So you really got to learn which ones you could maybe play with a little bit more than the other ones. Um, and then run your your schemes accordingly. Well, you know, Kim Michelle, I don't know if any of them were stricter than my mom. But they certainly were more, they had less skin in the game if I was doing something that maybe I shouldn't have been doing. They, believe me, they did got me out and well again that's just a supposition maybe if I had done something wrong those the sick. parents unite right. they're a team yes yeah and they yeah. and so they definitely but they they weren't as disciplinarian maybe I don't mm -hmm. know so I never looked at them as a I threat. a threat except for if I was doing something wrong then yeah. it was definitely I didn't want to see them I didn't want to see Glenna Glenna was the one that I ran into all of the time. Like, Glenna, why are you out? It's Glenna. midnight. Go home. Yes. So I can <laughs> run them up. Right? <laughs> and bless it. Bless it. I mean, when I was younger, Glenna and my dad, they would get in these great big, huge water fights. And it, the great big hoses were all pulled out. And those great big buckets, the construction buckets were used. And there was lots of laughter and screaming. And I remember hoses being shot inside of each other's house that's trying hilarious. to get the other one so those kinds of memories you know the neighborhood barbecues yeah. and the sleepovers and the camping trips and the baseball out in the circle and basketball on our driveway you know all of that I have great fond memories about that my kids haven't had that kind of experience unlike yours patty who grew up you guys had your first house in a neighborhood where there were a lot of kids we chose to move into a neighborhood that didn't have a lot of kids and so our boys didn't have that same kind of experience that we did and sometimes i wonder if that you know if i look back on that with regret or if i don't and it's some days yes and some days no because our neighborhood experience as adults and as you know, a young couple and as us now is very different than it was when I was growing up. Um, if I talk to my kids today, <clears throat> they probably wished that we had stayed in the first house oh, and not ever moved to the other house. Because there were so many kids. So mm -hmm. many kids and they knew the neighbors and we weren't spread out because the lots were like tiny quarter acre lots. Right. And so everyone and everyone was kind of at the same stage in life. So they grew up. Right. The same age, but then we moved out there. The lots were big. And honestly, it does uh, hinder getting to know your neighbors when there's more space between your neighbors. You know, I find that interesting that that's how it is now. Because, you know, in our book for this month, The Whole Town's Talking, one of the things 
I mean, they had the people that live in town, but then they have the people that live out on their farms and they're spread out. And yet the connections that they have, even despite the, the size distance. and the distance mm -hmm. between them. But I think, you know, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they were out walking all the time and out, they had to walk to town. They had to walk to church. They had to walk well, to 20 school. miles and they were in the like snow backwards, both uh, ways, yes, exactly. uh -huh, yeah. both, exactly. uh -huh, both ways. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they also had to rely on each other. Right. A lot. Absolutely. In, in our book. Um, more where, so in the beginning. Uh huh. And more so, right. Um, in the 1800s. Right. More so in the late 1800s. That's even before today. my time. Just right. So we're you, clear. Weren't, you weren't around? No. You mid 1800s. One of okay. But mid. not quite the early. Early. 1800s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But even in the book, there, the meaning of neighbor changed for the characters of the book as time progressed and you can really see how that progression takes place as the book moves through different generations mm -hmm. and I think that it's similar to what maybe we've experienced yeah. in that our definition and our experience with neighbors has changed yeah because do you think that neighbor is a geographical definition or do you think neighbor is a social definition well I think that we need to also ask, has social media changed the way that we have relationships with neighbors and friends? Do we find connection on social media more so than getting outside and going and meandering through the neighborhood and stopping and chatting and visiting? Do you think that has something to do with it too? Well, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt that um, many of us, through, whether it's with our jobs or even social engagement, find a lot of uh, a lot of that relationship and a lot of that connection through social media, through Facebook, through Instagram, yes. through all of the other platforms. I don't know. Well, you <laughs> through you're, Twitter, you're through uh, through TikTok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that's our next favorite mm -hmm. to try. <laughs> you know, through all of those different platforms, I know that there's. There's a wealth of, I know there's a wealth of content, whether there's a lot of connection and because for me, in order for connection to really happen, there gets to be a give and take. There gets to be some kind of interaction that happens and I, is viewing, is that an interaction? If, if there's not a feedback response, if there's not if I'm not responding to you and you're not responding back, is that an interaction or is mm -hmm. that is this an old fogey having this conversation about what connection? Well, I'm going to say no, that's not an interaction, and yes, this is an old fogey. <laughs> <laughs> meaning you or yes. meaning me? Well, it, awesome. well, actually, we need to shout meaning out me. a little bit because yesterday was Kim Michelle's birthday. <laughs> yesterday was Kim Michelle's mm -hmm. happy birthday. <gasps> Thank that you. was really fantastic. <laughs> they say it's your birthday. Na 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 na. It's my birthday too, yeah. Na 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 na. We're fantastic. Any we are so Anywho. good. Happy right. birthday, Kim Michelle. Thank you. Yes, and I'm um, glad that we spent that together. Yes. Because that interaction was fantastic. Yes, yeah. and I have my right. I have my people, and I'm so blessed with that. I have my crew. I I have my people. Uh, and some, and do I have those relationships with my neighbors? No, I, I don't, but I feel like I have relationships that are really key and important to me. You know, I have my family relationships that are really key and important to me. I, and I still have relationships that I believe I'm building through social media. And I think that in this year in particular, there's been, we've all had the unique experience that social media has played even a bigger role, whether that's Zoom or whatever, that we're even doing classes through Zoom and those kinds of things. And um, even as all of that has happened, I think that there are probably some people that feel isolated, even though they're maybe even more active than ever 
in some of those social media platforms. And I just, I, I want everyone to have their people. I want everyone to know their crew. I want everyone to find their pod, multiple pods, right? Right. I agree, Kim Michelle. And I think at the same time, it is the one thing that did keep a lot of us sane was being able to see each other on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for that. But it doesn't take the place of the real thing for me. No, not at all. And we all we all know that. We know that interaction face-to-face is much better as far as school goes. We talked about that. Online learning is not comparable at all to face-to-face learning. Right. Um, we also know that the face-to-face connection where there's interaction is human um, nature to want. In fact, it's helped us survive as a species. Mm-hmm. Um, it, no interaction, just watching someone's post has not helped us survive as a species, like connecting with people. In fact, what is the purpose of getting to know your neighbors? Um, when I was a young mom, the purpose was to create a shared trust that my kids were in good care and their kids could come to my house and if we needed something. And it was this shared experience of raising kids together with shared uh, maybe values even Mm -hmm. Um, if I needed a stick of butter um, if I need a stick of butter of butter today I go to the store yeah right Um, but when my kids were little we didn't go to the store right and um, because I had that community yeah experience Um, but I think the purpose of getting to know my neighbors today is different than it was when my kids were home and they were little and, and I loved that for them and I'm glad they had that experience. But today I have my pod, I have my friends, I have my whole family lives here. I mean, minus my two kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my extended family, my right. parents and my siblings. And um, I would like to know my neighbors more, but I mean, shame on me, I haven't taken the time to do that. And if I want to know my neighbors, that's my responsibility to know them, to get to know them. Right. Yeah. It's, I'm not waiting for someone to get to know me. I'm fine. But if I want to know my neighbors, I feel like that's on me. And I think there's, I think there's a, a, I think that there may be an unsuspected reward Mm -hmm. for reaching out and maybe maybe the gift in reaching out, maybe it isn't something that I necessarily, um, I'm doing because it's going to benefit me, but maybe the person I'm reaching out to, that's exactly what they need in their life. Maybe that's my expression of grace. I don't know. Right. You know, but I, I, when we were contemplating this topic, I'd said that, you know, I think that we get so busy sometimes that I'll, in my neighborhood, there's people moving in, you know, quite often, and I'll see somebody moving in, and I'll be like, oh, somebody's moving in. I'm going to make them something. I I love to cook, and and yeah, so I'm going to make them something and go over there, and then our lives are busy, and I get busy, and I I don't do that immediately, and then I see them, you know, three weeks later pulling into their driveway, and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to make them something and take it over there, and then it's two months later, and I'm like, well, now that's embarrassing to, to, to welcome them to the neighborhood two months later. And so my own thinking, my own being embarrassed about it, stops me from going over there and just saying, hey, welcome, welcome mm-hmm. you know, because we have a neighbor across the street. I, I, I'm not kidding. He, he comes out every, every night, and he takes his uh, lawn blower and he blows off his um, sidewalk and down his gutter all the way down the street. Uh, And then he comes across the street and he'll do ours and the sidewalk and all the way up even as far as our front door to make sure that nothing that he did on his side got over onto our side he's just being that that's so gracious Mm -hmm. scott was out there the other day and he mowed the lawn and then he edged it and so the pieces of lawn were still sitting that he had edged out right and so then scott came in for the night and then we see this little light out there on our front lawn and we're like what is that and we look out there and there's our neighbor and he's got the shovel and he's piling 
the edge treatments from the edge of the lawn up on his shovel and then taking them over to his side, his house, and dumping them in his garbage. How nice. I, yes. You know, I mean, nobody asks him to do that. And he right. doesn't do that because we're fawning all over him saying, oh, thank you for that. Because we haven't done that. <laughs> but he, he's just doing it. He's just, you know, I mean, that's, he's doing it because he feels like that's the, that's how he can play in his life. Right. Yeah. That's so nice, I mean, Kim Michelle. I know. That's so nice. You know, I do have to say about our neighbors that, um, you know, we moved in and um, there weren't kids. Our neighbors were older and they have, every single one of them have watched the boys grow and are always saying, can't believe how big they are. And they talk to us about them. And, and now at this point in our lives, it's been really rewarding because we're kind of the young kids on the block. And so we have this opportunity to kind of watch out for them. And I really like that part. Like I, we have the neighbors right across the street from us, kitty corner across the street and right immediately to our left. And while we're not of the same generation, we certainly have enjoyed them as neighbors and really enjoy being able to help them now, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, I've found that to be, it's not anything like what I grew up with, right? Yeah. Because that yeah. was a totally different, you know, young families, everybody had young families and whatever, but what we get from them, you know, they're such characters and especially Rick right across the street, he's Dr. Doolittle. He is like the animal whisperer. And we always, anytime a bird flies into our front window or our back window. That's why you can't clean your windows. We can't. That's why I don't clean my windows. I don't do the inside. I don't do the inside and only quarterly do the outside. That's why I don't do, do mine outside. either. <laughs> no, it's legit. It's legit. Because then we end up taking them over to Rick. And Rick nurses them back to health. And, I mean, he's... He, you know, my boys have always really gotten a kick out of Rick with all of his animals. And, you know, there's that. And then Mariner next to him and Lois, it, we've just loved them as a couple. It's definitely different. Our meaning of neighbor has changed from when I was young to how we raised our kids. And now from when we raised our kids to how it is now, now that Judd and I have more time to sit back and and actually see what's going on outside of our mm -hmm. little crazy raising of the family. Yeah. I read this really powerful article that was talking about how during the pandemic, people in New York City in these really large high rise apartments were for the first time being in relationship with their neighbors mm -hmm. because they weren't able to be with their families. And so for the first time, they were getting to know their neighbors. And when some of the um, restrictions were starting to loosen up a little bit, but they were still restrictions, they would start having some dinner parties with their neighbors out in open spaces on their right. balconies and stuff like that. And for the first time, they were really building these wonderful relationships with their neighbors that otherwise they might not have ever experienced before. And it was such a beautiful article that I read and how they expressed their um, appreciation towards each other was so beautiful. It was really lovely. I love that. Yeah, I did. I saw a lot of that on TV a year ago where people would turn the music on or something and they would all come out to their porch and wave at each other and do a little dance party and at least see humans and have that connection. And I, I think in Utah, we were really lucky, especially oh. in Southern Utah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, yeah, very, very lucky, lucky because we weren't shut down like the well, rest of Nevada the is state. still, I know, very tight. And that, you know, again, during the pandemic, we did see a lot of shifts in who we, what we could do and our, and being able to check on neighbors definitely was something that we could do when we couldn't reach out. Mm -hmm. and go and see our families. So yeah, I didn't do that. I, I didn't check on any of my neighbors. Oh, 
Oh. I th- but at the mm. same time. Well, because. maybe I checked on a few that I like. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors down the street. Well, you you knew which ones you liked. Yes, I do. So, no, I like I like all my neighbors. And what I mean by like is that I knew well enough. Right. To be yeah. able to do that. Uh, honestly, yeah. uh, we don't know our neighbors. Scott and I mm-hmm. don't. We know across the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, and we know the ones that were on the other side because um, he reported Sean to they his wife reported Sean to the police um, because Sean was it was Christmas time we had all our lights up right and they were old, an older couple and so Sean's like I'm gonna go put their Christmas lights up for him and we're like oh that's so sweet so Sean's putting up their Christmas lights and he hears you better walk away from my door right now oh my and, gosh and Sean's like it's me. I don't care who you are. You better walk away from my door right now. <laughs> it's like, it's it's Sean from next door. I don't care who you are. I've called the police already. You better walk away right now. Oh my goodness. I'm just putting your Christmas light. You better. So he's like, okay, and just left. Well, they came Sean over the next day, totally embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> to come over to your house, <laughs> come over to my house and put my lights up. Those are really kind of the only two that we've gotten that we've, to know. Yeah. Well, the three that we know are. Well, there's four because then there's Doyle's daughter and son, Tom and Shauna, that we love, 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 love so much. But they're down the block. But in 20 years, yeah, that's all we know. Ours is a very, I mean, it's a different relationship. I, I mean, just the thinking around neighbors and like you said, Patty, before you have, you, we've all established, and Kim Michelle, you said the same thing. We have our pods of people. Right, that we we drive to see our friends now, as opposed to walk, walk outside, outside and sit and, on the veranda yes. and watch people go by and have a yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, because it's I, just different. It's, it's just, not bad. It's different. Right. It's just different. And so, really, maybe is it does it have to be an either or relationship? Either we have a relationship with our neighbors, or we don't, or and we're bad, or we. Do we have relationships? Is that really the bigger question? Do we have relationships with people that we see that we get fulfillment from? And does it have to come from neighbors? Well, maybe that's part of, that's really the point of this conversation. Does it have to be an either or? Does there have to be a trade-off if I have this close relationship here and if I can investigate relationships that I don't currently have Mm -hmm. and I haven't currently fostered. There may be something beautiful out there I'm meant to experience that if I don't put myself out there, I'll never experience. I will have missed it. So what Mm -hmm. the only thing that would stop me from investigating that is my own thinking around it's too late or it's been too long or it's uncomfortable or it's awkward for me or whatever. I have to say that that happened to me. Um, Our very, we have one next door neighbor and there's nobody, there's an empty, it's like a retention pond next to us. So we just have the one neighbor and, and the original neighbors we knew, and then they sold their house and moved and we got new neighbors and we had met them a couple times, but they don't go outside a lot. There's a health issue. And so we didn't really get to know them. I'd met the husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I found out that the husband had been sick for a really long time and they had actually been in Salt Lake for a while. He's been in the hospital. He got West Nile virus. Wow. And I felt like a horrible neighbor because I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And when I found out that they were back, I and her husband was still in like a, a rehab, I went over and took a banana bread and we sat and talked and she was lovely and it was wonderful. And I thought, this is great. We're gonna be, I can, I am neighborly. I can be neighborly and, and get to know them. But that was my, I, we haven't fostered that much mm-hmm. after. I haven't fostered that much after. Um, husband came home. He brought us a Christmas tree, sat and talked for a while. It was wonderful. I love to talk to my neighbors. My neighbors across the street have young kids. Uh, when they're outside and we're outside, we talk and say, hey. But that's, that's about it. And that's not how it was years ago when the kids were little or when I was growing right. up. But that's enough of where it is now. I think we can be neighborly and if there was a need and I knew about a need, I'd be happy to help. But uh, I do foster 
my relationships and that connection, as long as we have relationships and connection, it doesn't have to be a neighbor, but it can be, and it can be both. And I just am reading um, some of the posts on our live feed and Scott said, yeah, I wonder, teacher for me. I know he's always, I wonder if I work to be a better neighbor, if I would have better neighbors. And I agree with that. We get what we put we reap what it. we sow. We get what we yeah. put in. And, uh, that's, I mean, maybe that's the gentle nudge today is, yeah, is that is my gentle nudge yeah. today. Yeah. Go ahead. And I think that, uh, one of the things that, uh, that I just want to piggyback to what you said is that, uh, this isn't about. If you have fabulous relationships with your neighbors, then we just acknowledge Good you for, for that. Good for you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have fabulous relationships with people that are not your neighbors, then we acknowledge you for that. And if you don't have those relationships, this isn't about making anybody wrong about any of that. And if I don't for example, if I don't have relationships with my neighbors, it's not about making me wrong about that choice either. It's just an opportunity to sit back and say, okay, so why why don't I? And is the thinking around why I don't, is, is that, does that serve me or not serve me? And if it serves me, then great. Then it's, then more power to me. But if, if that thinking doesn't serve me, then I'm a choice to do something about that. That's all. Absolutely. That's all. If that thinking around it, if you want to do something and you decide, I want to get to know my neighbor. Yeah. I I had, today was a grandma day. I had my grandson with me today. He is six. And I said, should we make cookies? We should make cookies to take to the neighbor. And he's like, no. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Did Did you say we should make cookies and eat them? (laughs) Yeah. I just, I'm like, basically I just want the cookie dough. That sounds so cute. That sounds cute. Well, so Kim Michelle, what is your dental nudge again? So my gentle nudge for me Mm -hmm. and for anyone who feels um, inspired to do that is to uh, reach out to create a neighbor. But I'm going to suggest to you that it doesn't have to be how traditional neighbor is necessarily defined. So however you would define a neighbor relationship, whether that's geographically close to you or not, because I think those are definitions that, you know, don't really, really yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whether they're on your geographical street or whether they're on your social media street, uh, reach out and uh, introduce yourself or nudge yourself into a relationship with a new neighbor. That's nice. That's my gentle nudge. That's nice. Patty, what's your gentle nudge? Well, the same for me is I, <clears throat> I, we have a ton of new homes near us and a lot of people moving in and I see people walking their dogs and, um, and I will say hi, but I don't get to know anybody. I don't know names. And I think it would be nice if I did go, there's probably a lot of great people that I could be friends with. And then I could stop being friends with you guys. Oh, wait, that no, sounds like what? a, oh, wait. Don't talk to your neighbors. Yeah, you, you are banned. No, no, no conversation talking to with the neighbors. Your neighbors. No, but I think, uh, you know, if you need something and you walk by and you're getting your mail or say, hey, or hey, you know, I, th- I think it's important to at least acknowledge your neighbors. And for me, I, I would like to make a bigger effort to get to know at least the neighbors directly next door and the ones across the street. Yeah. That's nice. That That's is it. really nice. What about yeah. you, Jill? My gentle nudge is two part. The first part is to um, try to beat your neighbor out in the on trash day morning and take their can up to their wherever they put their can. I love that. That's oh. the first gentle nudge. The second gentle nudge is to start reading the whole town's talking. Um, and get a really fun insight as to how these neighbors interacted mm-hmm. and how they grew to, um, some felt it was a blessing and a curse. And um, the how dependency on each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the generations, a and a curse. Yes. Mm-hmm. And how the generations moved forward together and how their lives were intertwined. So that would be my second gentle nudge. I love that. Read oh, the whole town's talking. Yeah. And Which if you is, haven't started that, here it is. If you haven't started it, really, it's just, you'll fall right into it. It's yep. just such a. It's delightful. It, yeah. it is. It delightful. really is. And yeah. a really great. I learned a lot about history of that time period, too. 
Yeah. So, okay, Blue Bowl. Blue Bowl. Here you go, KM. Blue Bowl, KM. What surprised you the most? What's going to surprise me the most is that the Utah Jazz are going to close out their series tonight with Memphis. Woo! Go team. Go okay. team. Go team. Okay. I don't know any of the players. I'm so happy for them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> biggest accomplishment of the week. This is mm. Patty. Patty, what is your biggest accomplishment of the week? All my laundry is done currently once I get home and switch it one last time. That is awesome. Uh, we were out of town from Thursday to Monday. So I did, uh, so yesterday, what did I do yesterday? Uh, you took me out for my birthday. Yay! Yes. That was a, that was such a great accomplishment. Not, I, a, not a feat to, that was. A, I think you had a massage. I did. I got up yesterday morning and started, yesterday seemed to be the first day of summer, and I did. I started with a massage. It was the first day of summer, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Okay. So mine is, what from the week made me smile? Oh, most definitely having my sister and my nephews um, spend the last night and 24 hours um, while my sister, my sister took my niece to Vegas to get on a flight to go to Ecuador. She's going for for three or, weeks. Yeah, to do a service mission to build schools. And I got to have my nephews. I love them so much. I love all my nephews so much. I just was lucky to get these two. And then my sister came back, and we swam. We hung out. And I love I love that. And then having the time with them last weekend when we were up north for Savannah's graduation. And all your siblings. All my siblings, all my nieces and nephews, first time since the covid it was yeah. just that's just been that's just been the highlight of, of the my crop. month highlight yeah, of that's my month awesome for sure. good yep that's so great Thanks. good yeah okay well ladies, thank you for joining us this was episode 007 thanks for being here for 007 and mm -hmm. joining us in our conversation yeah. about neighbors yeah go be neighborly <laughs> You don't even have to wear a sweater. No, uh -uh, you don't. Or you change can. your shoes. You don't have nope. to. Nope. Not changing my shoes. Nope, don't have to. <laughs> Thanks for listening to It's a Great Day to Talk. Be sure to follow and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. And until next week, get out there and talk. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.